I'm Emily of British Girl Bakes and I'm going to show you how to make this bright and cheerful dinosaur cake using only buttercream, no fondant. Start by mixing colours for your dinosaurs. I've used gel colours for mine, adding yellow to orange and green and adding orange to pink to make these neon shades of my 4 minute buttercream. Put some parchment or wax paper on a cutting board or a baking tray and spread buttercream onto it in patches, getting it as thin and smooth as you can. If you find that the paper is moving all over the place, you can tape it down with some masking tape. Place the board or tray with the paper and buttercream in the fridge for 30 minutes, or in the freezer for 15 minutes. And now you'll need some dinosaur cookie cutters and a bowl of very hot water. Take your buttercream out and dip a cookie cutter into the hot water, shaking the water off but leaving the cookie cutter hot so that it cuts neatly into the chilled buttercream. Lift it up carefully so that you don't snap the buttercream, and I find that the most successful way to do this is angling it to lift it up on one side first and then the other. Depending on how big your patches of buttercream are, you might be able to twist your cookie cutter around to cut more than one dinosaur out of each colour. If you're enjoying this tutorial, please like it by clicking the thumbs up button and subscribe to my channel for a new cake decorating tutorial every week. After cutting out the dinosaurs, put the buttercream back in the fridge or freezer to chill and harden it again for at least 15 to 30 minutes. Then slide an offset spatula underneath each patch of buttercream to loosen it from the paper, and use a knife to cut away the excess buttercream, leaving the dinosaurs behind on the paper. If any of the dinosaurs snap as you're lifting the cookie cutters up, you can gently push the pieces of buttercream together and the warmth of your fingers might make them stick to each other. When your dinosaurs are all cut out, put them back in the fridge while you frost your cake. I'm using this bright purple buttercream for my cake, which I've made by mixing my 4 minute buttercream with violet and pink gel colours. I'm applying the buttercream to my cake with an offset spatula, and smoothing it out with my frosting smoother to expose any air pockets, which I'm filling in before using a textured comb. You can use smooth frosting for this design, but the cool thing about this technique of cutting dinosaurs out of buttercream and then applying them to a cake is that you can do it on textured frosting, whereas if you stenciled the dinosaurs onto the cake that would only really work with smooth frosting. The frosting needs to be sticky for the chilled dinosaurs to attach to it, so it's important to have your dinosaurs all ready to go before you frost the cake. When you're happy with the frosting, take the dinosaurs out of the fridge and lift them up and press them firmly into the frosting. Don't worry that they're flat instead of curved for now, we'll curve them around the cake later when they've softened. If you try to curve them now, you'll crack or snap the dinosaurs. If that happens, I'll show you how to fix it in a minute. Work quite quickly to press all of your dinosaurs into the cake while they're still cold and hard, because as they warm up, you'll imprint and smudge them with your fingers. When you've stuck all of your dinosaurs onto the cake, Leave the cake at room temperature until the dinosaurs warm up and soften, which will take about 15 minutes depending on the temperature of the room. While I wait for mine to soften, I'm piping a border on top of the cake, using the leftover neon buttercream in piping bags fitted with a 1M star tip in each bag. I'm piping little circles of buttercream overlapping each other so that they form little links, wrapping all the way around the top of the cake, and I'm going to pipe another layer on top later once this layer has set. Now my dinosaurs have warmed up, so I'm wrapping the cake with parchment paper, or you can use wax paper, pressing it gently against the dinosaurs to curve them around the cake. You'll know your dinosaurs are ready if you can bend them with very little pressure. If they don't move when you press on them, wait a bit longer. The parchment protects the buttercream, so that you don't smudge it with your fingers. But after bending the dinosaurs, we can't take the paper off straight away because it will pull away from the buttercream and leave textured smudges on the dinosaurs. So instead, put your cake in the fridge for at least 30 minutes so that the buttercream dinosaurs chill and set again, and then take the cake out and peel the paper off. You can see that this worked really well for all of my dinosaurs except the orange flying one. It's a pterodactyl, I think, because there's a part I didn't press against the cake so it's sticking out a bit. If that happens, you can wait for the buttercream to warm up and soften again, and then repeat the process with a little piece of parchment paper or wax paper to wrap just that one dinosaur against the cake. If any of your dinosaurs cracked or broke when you lifted the cookie cutter or pressed the dinosaurs against the cake, you can touch those up now that they're cold. 
Spread or pipe a bit of buttercream, the same colour as the dinosaur, and spread it over the crack with your offset spatula, going over it several times to smooth out this fresh buttercream until it's flat against the dinosaur and covers up the crack. I'm doing the same for this T-Rex down here, and next I'm going to fix a smudged tail on this yellow dinosaur around here. I'm using a sharp knife to draw the outline of the tail, and then scraping off the smudge from the other side of the line. And because the dinosaur and the purple frosting are both cold, they're both hard and they'll hold their shape as I cut and scrape, and the smudged tail frosting will lift off quite easily, and I won't damage the frosting underneath with my knife. Now that my colourful border on the top of the cake has set, I'm going to pipe another one on top to give it some extra height and even more colour. I'm piping the links of buttercream in the same order, but starting in a different place, so that the same colours aren't on top of each other. It's best to do this after the bottom row has set, so that as you pipe this top row, if the piping tip touches another colour on the bottom row, it doesn't drag that colour into the piping on the top row. And there it is! Thank you for watching, please remember to like this video by clicking the thumbs up button and subscribe to my channel for a new cake decorating tutorial every week.